Okay, so we're going to determine the activity of acid phosphatase. So we open the enzyme kinetics one context, and that will generate a bench. In the bottom left hand corner, we can start generating tubes if we want to generate a full set. Now, in this full set, we've got a big rack of sodium hydroxide tubes, each containing 15 mils and some water and some buffer. But the real reagents are the uh, substrate and product. So the substrate is PN. PP. The product is PNP and the enzyme that converts them is the acid phosphatase. But the first thing we've got to do is make a standard curve. And to do that, we're going to generate a rack of six big tubes. So we make six slots, six columns, uh, one row. We select uh, the big tubes, the 15 mil tubes, and we select six of them and then we click create and that will make this rack which we can move to the front now everything's getting a bit busy so we'll move it we'll move the camera back and we'd also just reposition things so that we can get our substrates nicely into view we'll also uh, open up the the lids so let's bring those substrates round as promised and we're now going to create uh, different concentrations of pnp by putting 0 to 500 microliters of PMP into each of those six tubes. So using the correct pipettes, uh, a P200 for the first couple of additions, and then a, uh, a P1000 for the others. So in go the, the volumes, and each time, as I said, we're using a different pipette, so hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get the most out of the accuracy of the pipettes by doing that. Then what we're going to do is add uh, water to the tubes to make the volumes up to 500 microliters. So whatever amount of PMP we put in, we put the difference uh, of water to make 500. So 500 into the first tube, 400, 450 into the second tube, 400 into the next one, 350 into the next one, and so on. And then that will give each of these tubes 500 microliters. But they'll all be different concentrations. Now, very important that we mix. So we select the rack, choose mix, and that mixes them all very nicely. Now, in order to develop the color, we need to add sodium hydroxide. And that's just the case of adding 4.5 mils of sodium hydroxide into each of the tubes. So first of all, the, the first tube, when we add it, there's no color change. But each time we add the sodium hydroxide now to the tubes with the PMP in, we'll see this increasing amount of yellow color forming. And that's because the PMP is yellow. And of course, it's a, a bigger concentration uh, as we go from left to right. So if we close the lids and give them a good mix, remember every time we see that purple outline, it's screaming mix, mix, mix. And now we could actually measure the absorbance of these uh, by setting up some cuvettes. So again, six slots, six vessels, and this is now a rack of six cuvettes. And these cuvettes uh, need at least a mil but not more than 1.4 mils. So let's, uh, let's just put 1.4 mils into each. You'll be tipping your solutions into these cuvettes, um, but we'll just pipette uh, 1.4 into each. And then the next step is simply to measure the absorbance, which we can do by clicking on the rack uh, and then clicking absorbance. The only problem is that the wavelength may not be right. So to select the wavelength properly, let's uh, go to the top left hand menu, choose the, the reader, and now when we choose absorbance, we get the right numbers. Now if we copy those numbers and paste them into Excel, then uh, that we can start building a, a standard curve. And that's what I've done here. You can see uh, really nice axes, and exactly how you do that is going to be uh, something to discuss, but that's the aim to get that relationship.